this is the summary of um, what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start by what is Industry 4.0, what is Internet of Things, what is Artificial Intelligence, Industry 4.0, and IoT Digital Revolution, Industrial AI Impact on Manufacturing, AI and IoT. It's one of the most powerful combinations, but to understand the sixth point, we need to really deep dive into the fourth and the fifth point. And at the end, we're going to talk about the conclusion and perspective. This is going to be uh, different from last time. So I have first delivered this in a conference. It's called iTechnoCup 2020. And it's called 2020 because of the COVID. But then it happened in 2021 in August. It's It was with uh, Jakarta Polytechnical School, which is the biggest engineering school in uh, Indonesia. And this version is uh, very different is because we're going to cover two main things, which are the leadership aspect and the startup aspect. So the business aspect. I'm not sure where it cut off last uh, time. So I will try to talk a little bit about leadership and startups. So if you are starting your new startup, you better pick like a new technology so you can invest your time in it. Because if you pick something old, there will be too much competitors and you will probably will not be bringing something new to the table. But if you are bandwagon on new like services and technologies, there is still a big room for innovation and for you to be a rising star. And if you have your own startup or you want to start your own startup or you are in a company and you are interested in entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is different from entrepreneurship. Um, so entrepreneurship, you start your own thing, like a new idea and it's a startup. But if you are working in a company and in that company, you want to have uh, your new ways and implementations, is called entrepreneurship. It's like, for me, like in the investment bank I'm working with, it's called the innovation team, and now it's called the data excellence team. We are doing entrepreneurship. And to do those kind of thing, things, you need to have <coughs> leadership aspects and leadership, like, you need to have a leadership figure. It can be you, but it can be somebody else. And that somebody else need to have the right tools and he needs to have the right personality and he needs to have the right management. Like so managing new technologies is different from managing supply chains or managing like agriculture activities. Uh, so the leadership aspect really differs from a startup to a company and when we are talking about deep tech and new technologies, the leader figure need to have a solid understanding for our for our talk is going to be a solid understanding of IoT, a solid understanding of artificial intelligence and the flexible mind to know how to combine both of, the, of those um, realms. So why I am emphasizing about the leadership and the startup aspect is because Today, we have something wonderful, it's called cloud services. You leverage your AI leader in you or your startup leader, your entrepreneur leader inside of you through the tools that you have. You can be the best individual, the best managers, the best whatever you want, but without the right tools, you will not, you probably will not succeed. So at the end, we will have <coughs> a small demo workshop. And I'm going to show you how those cloud services are working. And if you are an AI figure or an entrepreneur, that will help you inspire your colleagues, inspire the internal stakeholders and the external stakeholders. But like imagine if you are going to a soccer game and you do not have a ball to play you can do anything you can be like messi or cristiano but like you still do not have a ball to play with so the importance of 
the abstraction layers that have been done on top of IoT AI through the cloud services is very important to leverage your leadership style and be your own AI authority. And in here, I'm emphasizing about AI because that's like the main pillar of this talk. And IoT is one of the fields that you can leverage the power of AI and you make like a difference within the IoT uh, realm. <clears throat> so what is Industry 4.0? This is like a big question. Industry 4.0 is the digital transformation of manufacturing, production, and related industries and value creation processes. So the humanity have like four different phases, big phases. The first, when we have started use mechanical procedures and it was with water power and steam power. <clears throat> then the biggest uh, shift and the biggest transition was with the second industrial revolution with mass production. And here we are, of course, talking about supply chain. The third one is the computerization and automatization of almost everything and this started in the 70s and um, we are enjoying the fruits of that since the 90s but after that we have started talking about cyber physical systems and that was enabled by internet so these wireless networks have changed the way we perceive things and life and we call it the, industri the industry 4.0 or the fourth uh, biggest um, like industrial revolution. And in different countries, they use specific terms, different specific terms. For us, let's agree that industry 4.0 is the fourth industrial revolution. Yes. Okay, excellent. So what is Internet of Things? The Internet of Things, or IoT, is a system of interrelated computing devices, mechanical and digital machines, objects, animals, and people. So in simple terms, if you have an IP address, you are part of the IoT system. What does having an IP address mean? So if you have a unique identifier, on a network, it can be a private network or a public network. Your um, unique identifier or your IP address will be like your, let's say, your passport. That's how the other people will see you and will identify you. And when we are identifying each other, we are talking about we are talking about a system that everybody can interact together. But it's not mainly for humans, it's mainly for the, the human tools like mobile phones, laptops, and everything. So if we, so human beings, we are transmitting knowledge, we are talking, we are seeing, we are smelling, we are touching, we are interacting the devices are doing similar stuff. The important thing is the data. So we will be emphasizing about the data because we are trying to combine AI and IoT. So all of these devices are constantly producing data. And we need to process that data in three different ways and dependently from the source. So the source, it can be a smart house, it can be a dog, it can be, so now we have Elon Musk, Neuralink, and they are implementing um, a chair, small ships that and they had like to solve the Parkinson's disease. I'm not very savvy about what they are doing, but like that's, human symbiosis, like combining human capabilities with uh, artificial capabilities and enhancing it's like extended intelligence 
We humans have our own intelligence, but with these devices, our intelligence is enhanced. So we, so if you are part of the neural link, you will be emitting informations and data. You will be having a, a smart device inside of your skull and it's gonna be interacting, getting your data, analyzing your data and providing a solution. So the objective is for now is to solve the Parkinson's disease, but then you can hear MP3 music. You have a unique identifier. It's only unique to you and it's only you who can use it. But imagine all of us have those smart chipsets in our head or some in some other parts in our bodies. We will be we will be extending our intelligence through this IoT devices. So IoT is not just mobile phones or laptops or like smart TV, it can be anything. It can be also uh, very simple stuff like um, a transistor that measures uh, the temperature of the room and like sending informations to um, to like if you have a smart house, a smart home, you will be like having a laptop specific for the analysis and transition of all the data that is happening. That's an IoT thing. But like you will not really take advantage of that if you do not need, if you, do, you don't process the data. And after processing the data, you will need some AI models to take action and to make decision. For example, let's, say there is a fire in the house. So the detectors will detect that there is a big shift in CO2 levels. And that big shift in CO2 levels mean that there is a fire. So if you have an AI system, it can detect that more accurately than like, um, the classical devices that like will just uh, spill water on everything. Uh, we can have um, another example. If if you are working in a factory and you will have sensors. So, for example, let's take the example of Amazon uh, supply chain or FedEx or UPS. They will be having boxes that is moving all the time, and you have sensors that detect the shape of those boxes. But then, what happens if you have something unusual on those um, on those chains that is transmitting the boxes? If you bring a human being like to inspect and take a decision, that's gonna make you lose a lot of time. But if you have an AI model that can model the data of the sensors inside that factory or also inside that shipping uh, warehouse, you, you will actually will not lose any time. You will have like a continuous real time smart decisions. And then I want to talk about the other aspect of the data. It can be batching data, it can be uh, streaming data, and it can be a real time data. So for the batching data, uh, you will be sending information in a batch, but that is gonna sit down like for one hour, 10 hours, maybe days, and then like processing and getting results. That does not happen in all use cases, but in other use cases, you need a streaming data. I need to always see, for example, the statistics of a football game. If you are in a football game and you go to a website where people are betting, you need to update the users all the time. And then you have a real time um, data processing. It's like trading floors when you go to 
uh, when you see in the movies, like um, in Wall Street, people are trading, you need a real time um, informations. And to get those real time informations, for example, if you have a company that is dealing with, let's say, Starlink, which is another Elon Musk company. And Starlink is like trying to connect the world with internet everywhere. So if we are talking about Starlink, this is not like the trading example. With Starlink, you will need to have devices that are capable to send and receive communications and process them on the edge in real time. Otherwise, this will cause a lot of problems. So this is why IoT is not one of the easy domains. It's like very, from an infrastructure standpoint, it's complicated. But then we will see how with cloud services, this can be easier. I will go back to Google Meet. I think the sharing has stopped again. We can see the what is IoT slide. So yeah, I think we're good okay. now. Excellent. So now we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. So what is AI? I think most of you know what AI is, but here is my definition. AI is generally defined as the property of machines that mimic human intelligence as characterized by behaviors such as cognitive ability, memory, learning, and decision making. And the Microsoft Azure, they actually call the AI tools cognitive services. It can be applied to, um, by now you should be seeing the what is artificial intelligence slide with a paragraph. If you want to see that, let me know. So we have gaming, astronomy, healthcare, transport, agriculture, education. So everything can be, <coughs> can have AI into it. For example, Microsoft, Microsoft has the um, cognitive services. There are the, you will find NLP, natural language processing. You will find computer vision. You will find uh, search engine. It's like they use it for being search engine. You can find a lot of different things that are related to human cognitive abilities and they have succeeded to implement it in an artificial way. So AI in a nutshell is the mimic of human intelligence. And we have a lot of subfields of AI, like classical machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning. There are other subfields too, actually too many, but the main three or four are Classical machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning. And I think the rest are derivatives of those or combinations of those. Now we move on to Industry 4.0 and IoT, key elements of the digital revolution. So what is Industry 4.0 and IoT digital revolution? Most of these are the most interesting points that I can come up with which is sensor expertise and machine connection. And I already gave an example about those sensors. Sensing as a service, that's a very, very interesting one. And now like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft has their own sensing as a service, cloud services. So you usually hear about software as a service. Uh, you hear about platform as a service, but now we are talking about sensing as a service. You do not need to come up with your own infrastructure 
to um, feed, to connect the input with the output. You can use the sensing as a service. And then you have edge management concepts, like the best one is the devices. So these devices, like for Google Maps, it will detect your location and do the rest of the stuff. And not everything is happening in the cloud. It can actually, um, the processing and everything can be happening on your edge device. So when we are talking about edge management, we are talking about the end device. It can be a computer or a laptop. Then we have secure connection and device management. So the biggest challenge with IoT is this um, security aspects. If everything has an address IP and everything is connected to some network, how we can secure them and manage those devices. This is where uh, we need the 5G internet connection because everything is now connected. You can like give an IP address to your cat or your dog so you can track them in real time and you can track their health and like you can detect um, if they have a deficiency in some uh, vitamins or if they're gonna get sick those uh, these IoT devices can do that role and then we have data lakes and data models so where are you going to put all that massive data you're gonna dump it into data lakes but the concepts are evolving now you can find delta lakes lake warehouse lake warehouses we have a lot of different uh technologies to store data and then model the data and have our advanced analytics tools and aspects now how we're going to link what we are talking about with iot with ai it's the advanced analytics part if you having data and the input of data is the iot devices you will most definitely need to make models to help you make decisions. And here we are talking about not only prediction, but forecasting, classification, and uh, clustering. So if you have data that is coming from IoT devices and it only sits there, lonely in the warehouse or the, or the silos, that's like very sad. This is where we need to have some AI capabilities to derive insights and to have smart decision-making. And if you are having smart decision-making, you are shifting from the profile of a developer, of an architect, of a just an entrepreneur to a leader a leader figure, somebody who has the data, the devices, um, and you can build your own business around it. So the these points are uh, interconnected and they are actually put in a way that can help you think about having your own startup or changing your current business. And it can help you with having your leadership authority. So you have your devices, you have your input data, you stock the data, and then you run models and analytics. Then you get your predictions, classifications, then you can make your own decision. And once you are making the decision, that's the business model. You can have your own, your own business model creation for your business use case. So everything is interconnected. You cannot like just talk about IoT and just sit slowly in its place. You can connect it with many other aspects. <clears throat> now, artificial intelligence 
is the driving force of Industry 4.0. Like we said, Industry 4.0 is the pillar uh, of Industry 4.0 is the capability of inter interconnected devices through public and private networks to internet through a lot of different technologies and all of these connected devices we can derive insights from them through data science and artificial intelligence so what is the main pillar of industry for portal that's artificial intelligence and by the way Sometimes IoT seems like exactly like Industry 4.0, but Industry 4.0 like is the big umbrella, and inside of it you have a lot of other things. So AI can be used for predictive maintenance. It can be uh, used for generative design. It can be used for price forecasting and raw materials. And now with the war between Russia and Ukraine. Everybody are forecasting the oil and gas prices. So in California, uh, there was like the in the previous days there was like a big shift in the oil and gas prices, and everybody's freaking out in the United States. And then we have robotics. You can like watch Boston Dynamics like smart dogs, and you can see what Raytheon is doing like. That they are designing robots for military. It's kind of scary when you see them, but it's kind of really exciting to see how technology is advancing. And like, I think the perfect combination between AI and IoT is robotics. Then we have edge analytics. So it's the example I have given about mobile phones having their calculations on the spot. So it's not everything is calculated on the cloud. It can be like edge analytics, quality uh, assurance, and process optimization. And one of the best and not easy to do is the process optimization. So if you're having a use case, for example, of Let's say we have an application for food delivery and you need to find the best routes to deliver the food and you need to find the best spots where you have more clients and you need to find the best spot for um, restaurants and you need to connect all those three. It's one of the most complicated uh, issues to optimize. A lot of companies around the world, there is a lot of PhDs about that, how like, to optimize those things. But like, it's only possible when you have data about the routes, like peak hours, holidays, uh, accidents, and like you have all the data about the routes that you're going to take. You have data about... Um, the clients and the data about the restaurant and then like you can put all of that together to optimize the delivery process now this example is not really linked to iot but like process optimization is one of the main things that can be improved by ai and why the example i have given is not related to iot because that will be our next talking point. AI and IoT, a powerful combination. How to broad technologies are influencing life in the lab. And not only in the lab for us. We will be talking about almost everything. So the conversions, I'll go back to the Google Meet. to see that it did not cut off, <laughs> which is like really great. 
Now I will go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So, the convergence of AI and IT can redefine the way industries, businesses, and economies function. We already covered that point, and AI enabled IT creates intelligent machines that simulate smart behavior and supports in decision making with little or no human interference. We have talked about the first part, but the best part is the second one is less human interference, which means less wasted time, more accuracy, less room for error. And you can already see why this is huge. So let's give an example about AI and IoT with less human interference. Okay, I'm thinking about the Neuralink example because uh, for Parkinson's disease, they like put some electrodes in the head, and like you need to have well experimented uh, doctors that understand that cutting edge technology, and that's a like a lot of human interference to do those kind of things. But if you put a chipset in the head. There is no human interference. It's like you have a smart device in your head making decisions for you. And like they put it in a monkey's brain and the monkey was able to play a video game. So a normal monkey does not play a video game, but when you put that in its head, it's playing a video game. Why I'm considering this an IoT like example? Because you have a connected device. And the connecting device is dealing with data that is most probably modeled by a deep neural network. They still are not really that explicit about the technology that they are using, but we can already see that no human interference is doing great things in the biomedical field. I think it's like this is more of a sample example or extended intelligence. It's been done on pigs and monkeys, but I think soon human beings, like if we change the legislation, I think a lot of human diseases will be gone. Now, combining these two streams benefits the most common person and specialties alike. And here, we, we are not saying that combining AI and IoT is only going to be for experts, but there will be a democratization process. So everybody can benefit from this harmonious combination. And while IoT deals with devices interacting using the internet, AI makes the devices learn from their data and experience. So anything connected to a network will have some sort of input-output data in AI will enhance that process by learning from the input and have a smart output or at least an output that is not in a raw format, an output that can be used by the entity in question. So if we have for mobile phones, for example, Mobile phone is an edge device. So this is like one of the perfect example of the IoT devices. And when you open your camera, now there is an option like to have photos with enhanced AI. So you are not actually downloading a sophisticated model or anything. You can like take a picture and if there is too much light, 
you can use deep neural network to correct that for you. This is not like a hardware thing, it's like software thing. So the input is the image, and the output is an enhanced image on the edge device itself. So um, most of my examples are around uh, software aspects and tech aspects. We can give an example in a different field. For example, you know Telnet in Tunis, they, they, they have sent their CubeSat, and now we have a satellite. It's dedicated for IoT devices. So you have something floating in the space, receiving data, sending data, and making smart decisions every day. That, that's one of the most wonderful things about the fourth industrial revolution that couldn't happen like before. You can have like satellite to make a TV work or something, but you are not making the TV smarter. You have a static process that always keep on repeating itself. But like with the new satellites, you have interaction between the edge devices that are making decision on the spot. That's the big difference. Now we move on to a simulation. Uh, you can see on the left, the data sources, you can have like the normal databases that you know, the legacy systems, usually they are, um, you can find that in factories. Factories have a lot of legacy systems. You can have like as an input data the software as the service applications. You can have normal applications like on computers or mobile phones. You can have the web services and the ordinary files like Excel files or CSV files, PDFs. We load that data into a data lake, and a data lake you can store like data for batching, streaming, or a real time, but like processing will be different. So we will shift from raw data to process data depending on what we are expected to do with that. And then on the right, you can see the data sharing, data visualization, and developing machine learning models. So we are putting different uh, data sources into one place. We are processing them depending on what we need. And then we are having a different output depending on what we need to do. So maybe you know the software Power BI is really great for um, visualization. That's a different output from a machine learning model. So on the left, we have we can have the IoT devices, and on the right, we are having AI. This will be uh, the theme of our workshop. So you need to pay a Google Cloud Platform to do this workshop. So what I did is I took screen captures of the details, and it's free for you to follow. Before that, I will go back to Google Meet to check if it's working. Yes, and uh, it's working. OK. So Google Cloud Services for IoT and AI are all located into, in one platform called Google IoT Platform. This is, uh, we have talked about this. I have called this. Sensing as a service. And like you can see in the picture in here, this is like an oil extraction base from the picture. This looks like a hospital. This is a tractor, which means like agricultural activity. Oh, actually, this is a hospital, but this is a school. And a wind turbine. All of these 
are sending data and you can process the data. So we need the sensing as a service platform like Google IoT platform, where edge devices send data to cloud IoT edge. In the cloud IoT edge, we can find edge machine learning, edge IoT core, and we can have the edge device. They are usually, um, I think the presentation is, is still working for you? It said, I have lost my internet connection. Yeah, TopNet is horrible. I have 12 megabytes internet speed connection just for myself and it's stopping. Okay, now I'm presenting again. So Cloud IoT Core connect, manage and ingest data through Google Cloud pops up then the data is stored in cloud storage. This is like in, in, two, in one picture of three parts, we are making a resume of all the previous 15 slides. And like the last part is Google offers cloud machine learning to implement AI solution and other services like big data analytics, BigQuery. So this is the first part. This is like the IoT devices. This is where we deal with the input of the IoT devices. And this is where we store the data. And this is where we process and have the output. This is a magnificent platform. I really encourage you as future leaders or current leaders, as intrapreneurs and entrepreneurs to have an understanding of this. You cannot lead other people if you are not well informed about these kind of things. It will make your life easier. It will make people trust you and it will make your objective feasible. Money to invest money. If you do not invest money into these services, you will most probably fail, or at least like lose a lot of time. So now we move on to the powerful combination that I was talking about. This is the example. This is the real life example in of taxi publicity in New York. So in New York, they, in the USA, they have, in some states, they have this thing where, where they place ads on, okay. can you see this slide? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. So uh, in the United States, in different states, they place the ad on top of the taxis. They call them a cab. So they place the ad uh, advert in there. And one of the issues that, for example, in New York, what you are seeing in here in yellow green, those are the taxis and they are like, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So it's really a great way to put and place your, your, your ad. But like how, how to make those ads dynamically change? How to appeal, so Manhattan, they have like the rich people. Brooklyn, not so rich. Queens, I don't think, it's like middle class or lower middle class until Long Island. 
And even in Manhattan, they are very super there. You can find the ultra rich and you can find the normal rich. And in some parts, there are like um, the middle class people. And you have taxis flowing all the day. So in New York, like people, many people do not have a driver license because if they buy, even if they buy a car, there is no parking. So most, it's very common for people to not own a driver license. And this accentuates how important the taxi business. There are taxis everywhere and it's really important to place your ads in a real smart way. But how to make it dynamic? If that taxi is connected to the cloud, the taxi itself became an IoT device. And you can track down the taxi coordination and location. So the ads can change from one location to another dynamically. And it depends on the rush hours, and it depends on the holidays, and it depends on the location you are driving through. And you do not need to do that manually. You can do that automatically. So the data pipeline collects data from New York City taxis using cloud pops up and a data flow pipeline. The data is visualized as an overlay to a map of New York City, the one that you are seeing in here, with green dots representing taxis. So for me, I see the green, but I see the yellow. And the yellow is like a big density of green uh, points. The visualization is a little bit small. You can Google it and find the better visualization. BigQuery is used to gather and explore the data set. So BigQuery is like <coughs> the data storage, and at the same time is the analytics service. So with cloud data prep results, you, you can create seats to transform and clean the data in preparation for cloud machine learning. So this is the taxi. You have the position, and depending on the position and the date of the day and time of the day, you're going to have different display ads, and that is fed to cloud publication subscription. This is like the technical concept of IoT services. You need like a subscription to keep on sending your data continuously. And then you have cloud data flow, which, which will manage your flow of data. And you can like design this like with a GUI, with a graphical user interface. One will have like the cloud BigQuery like we talked about, like you store the data and you have analytics on the data. You prepare the data with cloud data prep and then you feed it to the cloud machine learning. This will optimize the whole process. And the ads will be dynamically placed on top of each taxi. This generates millions and millions of dollars and this is one of the example of process optimization and the combination of AI and IoT. You need to pay money for this lab. If you want to do so, let me know. I'll share with you. What we have in here like, is the summary of the lab. I have a paid subscription. I made screen capture, familiarize myself with the topic, and I have shared that with you. With this being said, that's the end of the small workshop and the talk in general. Please feel free to ask whatever question you want, and you can connect with me on LinkedIn if you have any questions. I'll be looking forward to the recording of the video, and feel free to interact. We will be having like one or two minutes, so do not be shy.
You can also send me a private text on uh, LinkedIn. You are welcome to do so. Otherwise, I uh, will give back the word to Mohammed, our host. <clears throat> so, um, since you do not have questions, thank you so much for being with me today, and um, thank you for the organization team for uh, having me, and have a great rest of the week. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.